I'm Courtney, this is Filament Stories, and today I wanna to talk about a new model that's very personal to me, and that's this 3D printed Braille cell that is 100% public domain. First off, there is a video by 3D Printing just released where he talks about this new Braille cell and his design. And if you haven't seen that, I would encourage you to go see it. I'll card to it. And there's another video where he talks about his pop fidgets, and that is going to play into what we're going to talk about here. So both of those videos are really important to see because if you're interested in 3D printing Braille cells for someone important in your life who's learning Braille, these videos are going to get you part of the way there. My daughter is blind and so she and I had a lot of fun working with 3D printing and giving him feedback and she's the one with the expert fingers. So where we ended was having a single and an eight cell, but where did we start? The goal for this was to try to come up with something that we could 3D print at a more economical cost than perhaps something that you would have to buy. So this is from APH and my daughter used this a lot when she was learning braille and i have no idea the availability of this or other tools like this around the world and 3d printy said let's come up with something and let's make it completely free and the question is how do we print this and how do we print it so that it's easy for little fingers to use there are two ways to print out these braille cells and let's go with the simplest and most straightforward method first that's going to be doing the entire component here the main piece in tpu now the reason this is nice is it's fun it's flexible it's soft to the touch and i really enjoy just holding this and pressing the buttons the downside is that tpu as a material is going to be more costly than pla which is the most common material but i think if this is something i was printing out and i was going to use it in my classroom for a number of students and hopefully over a number of years, it definitely would be worth it. So let's go through the process of printing this out in TPU. The first and most important thing is getting your TPU. And I cannot stress how much the importance of getting the right TPU is. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because the wrong TPU is going to have you very, very frustrated and unhappy with this model. And I, I hate to say that, but of all the time that I had my daughter testing models, that 3D Printy and I were testing, the number one thing that we were talking about was which TPU did we want to use? And he was tweaking the actual model itself, and he and I were both printing. And where we came up with and in his video he very clearly states is that you need 92a shore hardness now if 3d printing isn't something that you do a lot that's what in the world does that mean and it's not actually that complicated it's the lower the number the softer the material and a and D are measures of shore hardness, meaning how hard something is. So what we want to suggest is instead of 95A, you want to go with 92A. Whew, a lot of words. But I can, if you're in the US and hopefully around the world, I can give you some suggestions. There are some companies that very clearly state what their shore hardness is. Now, I will tell you, if you are looking online and trying to find a filament and it says, oh, it's TPU and it says it's flexible and there is no number and you can't find it, it's probably 95A. I would not buy it unless you are sure that it's 92A because there's a chance that you get it, you get excited, you go through all the printing, you put the buttons in and ah, oh, it's really hard. Where's the one that's in here? We had some that were so hard to click that my daughter and I got through about two buttons and we were like, that's it, we're done. And that's the difference between 95A and 92A, which is just really easy to push. Okay, so now you have your 92A TPU, what do you do? This is pretty easy. Once you have your 92A filament, you load it into your printer and you send it off to the printer. And when it's done, you are gonna have a really nice model like this, but it's gonna be missing all of the pegs. 
and that's okay because this is actually part of the fun. My daughter and I had a lot of fun with this. So the next thing you need to do is print the pegs and the preg pegs are just easy because that's in PLA. It could be pet G, it could be anything. So pick any regular, more common PLA and print out the pegs. Now there are two variations to this. There are rounded tops and flat tops. And my daughter and I both preferred the flat tops, but 3D Printy said, you know what? Why not provide both? And I think that's great. So you're gonna print out all of the little pegs and these things are really easy to print. So they print, um, if you will notice, they print lying flat. And that's because it's a much safer way to print them and also, if it was printed vertical and a lot of force was applied to them, the way the layer lines are, the top could just pop off on it. So it's a great way to print it from a print reliability standpoint and also a longevity standpoint. So now I have my little pegs and you can take them and then you can just push them in. Now, a lot of these will just push in with your fingers if you can't get them in with your there that one just popped in if you can't get them in with your fingers we decided that a hammer was a lot of fun and you can take a hammer and note the 3d printy said that there is a little lip around the bottom and so we would do this my daughter and i had a lot of fun with this and we would psh, wham and get it in with a hammer and that's just the initial thing and then you have the fun of popping them back and forth now this is my by far favorite way to do this the downside is tpu is more costly in general than pla or pet g but I think, again, if this is something I'm gonna use in my classroom, I'm gonna use in my child regularly, I think it's absolutely worth it. So that's way one. All right, this is the second way to print them. And this one is with using more PLA, which is less costly, but you do have some more steps. So in this case, the first thing that you're gonna need is you're still going to need some TPU to print the gaskets. And these are just a little bit of TPU. You can print out one of them if you're doing a single cell. You'll print out a number of them, eight in fact, if you're gonna be doing a big eight cell. And so you would just lay those out. It's a pretty fast print. And when you're done, you're gonna have a bunch of these. And then you're gonna tell your printer to start printing the main cell, but you're gonna need to give it a halt or a pause instruction. And 3D Printy has it very clearly in his notes where to put the pause. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna print up to a certain point and it'll stop. And at that point, you're gonna come in with your gasket and there's a spot, it's, it's ready for you. You're gonna lay down that gasket and it'll pop right in and and i didn't take that off the bill plate it's still printing but as i pop it right in and then you tell your printer to continue and as your printer continues it will cover that up and it will finish printing the braille cell and it will look just like there's no gasket in there but it's in there now the next thing that you need is you need your buttons and your buttons you can print them just like we had before. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna insert the buttons. You might wanna use a hammer. You might be able to do it with your fingers, but this is a way to use PLA with just a TPU gasket. Now, this way works really well. I think both of them have a lot of flexibility as far as ease of use. I find the TPU complete version to be a much, I, I really enjoy this one more, but it really depends on what works for you. So these are two ways to create your own Braille cells. Now I wanna just talk about 3D Printy and what he's done here because he worked so hard on this. He did iteration after iteration and I hope that what our fingers felt and more importantly my daughter's fingers felt that we gave him good advice because you all out there representing the visually impaired community the tvis and all those people educating blind people uh, and visually impaired people we need your feedback because 3d print he said this video comes out the models are made available and we're not done he said the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the feedback and we may make additional variations to them so please if you get a chance to print these out and you find that what we thought was great is not actually great for you all 
let 3D printing know, let us know, because his goal is to make modifications to help the community. And again, the fact that he has just made this available without having to attribute, uh, give him attribution, you can make changes to it. You can do anything. He said, go and be free. There are no restrictions on this. I just, that really warms my heart. And so thank you, 3D Printy, from all of us. And thank you out there to the community for you all giving us feedback so that those of you who are commenting on this, we can hopefully help make this type of assistive technology, a learning tool for children who are learning Braille, be something that's more affordable and available all around the world. Thank you guys.